Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the microphone your host for this afternoon, Mr. Mark Rogers. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. A uh, very good afternoon and uh, welcome to all of you from, uh, well, across southern New Hampshire and a bit beyond, I believe. It's an incredible turnout. Uh, we're, we're really uh, quite blown away by the, uh, by the huge numbers and delighted to have you all here. I hope you found enough food and drink in case you didn't locate it. Salad, fruit, and what's left of the pizza over behind. Lots of water and soft drinks and some custom micro-brewed beers uh, over by the checkered uh, tablecloth over there. <laughs> Including some beer called American Revolution. Check it out. And I'm uh, actually part owner of the brewery where it comes from. It's uh, from Earth Eagle Brewings in, uh, in Portsmouth. But uh, I'm not going to waffle on. I'm delighted to have Senator, Senator Cruz here. He's one of the champions of liberty and the Constitution in the Senate. And I'm, I'm going to hand over briefly to uh, John Irish, who will do the invocation and uh, pledge followed by Bill O'Brien, who will introduce the local dignitaries and the senator. John, come ahead. <laughs> Sorry about that. First of all, if I may, would all the veterans please raise your hands? We thank you all so very, very much for your service. And we also thank their families who supported them and helped them make it through. We could all bow our heads or just hold a moment of silence, please. Father in heaven, you brought us together to take a look at our country, to see what it is that we can do to bring our country back to what you had made us strong with and how you had made us strong. Give us the strength to make the right choices, the right decisions when we close that curtain so that we can bring America back to your great God-fearing country. Amen. Amen. If you'd all please face the flag up over the top of here. And for those veterans who are unaware, the law was changed about three years ago. If you so wish, even though you're out of uniform, you may salute the American flag now with a full military salute at your choice. If you'll please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Riley? I'm sorry. <laughs> Before we get going, Reach, would you introduce the Board of Selectmen for Hollis here? Thank you, Mr. O'Brien. Uh, my name is Varish Minukian. I'm one of the board members of the Board of Selectmen. First of all, we'd like to welcome the Senator Ted Cruz to our beautiful town of Hollis. <laughs> and we can't thank enough the Rogers family to host this beautiful event. I'm going to thank you very much. <clears throat> Among us now, you know, we're three board members here, okay? Don't say that we have a quorum or we're discussing business, okay? <laughs> All right. I'd like to introduce Peter Band and Mr. Frank Adwell. Mr. Band. Thank you, Varish. And uh, welcome all, and especially welcome Senator Cruz. Senator, I want to thank you for your principal conservative stands in the Senate. We know you get a lot of grief for it. We appreciate you fighting the good fight. And welcome to the town of Hollis. Mi casa et su casa. That's Spanish with a Yankee accent. Welcome, sir. Welcome, Senator Cruz. Uh, we live in a state that's probably one of the most evenly divided states as far as uh, Democratic and Republican voters. Hollis has five conservative Republican uh, selectmen, but as far as the voting uh, population in Hollis, in the McCain-Obama uh, uh, election, we had 5,500 voters, and uh, the split was eight-vote difference. So 
we need to support our candidates. We need to work hard to see that our choice gets nominated, but we really need to work hard to make sure that we carry the national election. We need to work together. Thank you. Welcome. And I want to start off by thanking Meg and Momra as well for this uh, wonderful turnout and for sharing their house with us. You know, as, as a, a selectman, I learned that I had a captive audience. You know, the state, the legislative state reps weren't going to go anywhere. So I used to write these speeches, and they'd have to sit there and listen to them. It was, it was all good. It really was. And, so I wrote, and I like writing speeches. So I wrote out a speech, but I thought, you know, should I give it, or, or should I just uh, do something off the cuff? So I talked to my wife, Roxanne, this morning, and I said, you know, you've read this speech. She said, yeah, pretty good. And, and um, then, I, uh, then I said, you know, maybe I should speak off the cuff. And she said, well, what would you say? And I'd say, well, um, this is the man that John Boehner called a, a jackass. And, and <laughs> I said, would that be enough? And she said, please read the speech. And, and so, so I'll do that, all right? Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, and she took out, you know, all those other remarks. So this should, this should be fairly good, I think. Um, you know, before I was elected to, to public office, I was like a lot of you. You know, I'd, I'd talk to neighbors and I'd talk to my friends. And I said, what is it with people that we elect to, to office? I said, why, why do they come to us and they make promises and then they get up there and we elect them and they don't fulfill the promises? And, you know, so when I, when I ran for office and, and when I ran for um, speaker, you know, I'd find myself making the same promises. And I remember riding away from a few events like this and I'd say, ah, oh, crap, I sound like a politician. And so, so you know, I said, if, if it ever happens that I get elected and I become Speaker of the House, I'm going to keep my promises. And so the proudest thing that people say, for me, that people will say to me when, when they come up now that I've been Speaker is, you know, Bill, you did what you said you're, you're going to do. And, and, and so, thank you, thank you. And so that, that's, that's real important to me, people that keep their promises. And, you know, because of what value are, is there in campaign conservatives who become conquered in Washington liberals? We have too much of that. You know, this presidential campaign, I've had the, the privilege of being invited to Iowa and South Carolina. I've spoken there, spoken in New Hampshire, and I've had um, the opportunity to sit down publicly and listen, as a lot of you have publicly, to a lot of the uh, Republican candidates. And, and I'm here to report, I think, what all, you, you, all of you know. We have great Republican candidates this cycle. We have the best America has to offer. Um, as a party, we have a right to be proud, co particularly compared to the sad state of the Democrat Party. And so when I tell you that at having met with all these individuals and spoken with them and been in awe of each one of them, but one clearly stood out. I, it, it means that this person has some remarkable attributes. And that person is Senator Cruz. Right. He, he so clearly stands out for all, from all the rest. He stands out for a love of America grounded in the immigrant spirit that made this country great. He stands out for conservative convictions that will bring back American exceptionalism and American traditions to the White House. He stands out for brilliant advocacy for conservative cause in the courts of our country and in the national legislature, in the Congress of our country. He stands out for an optimistic faith in America and its people. He stands out most especially for the characteristics of integrity and fortitude that will turn Washington around. Senator Cruz has kept his promises to be a conservative leader in Washington. And he's kept his promise to fight to bring fiscal sanity and good common sense back to Washington. Every, you know, every candidate promises to be a conservative, especially here in New Hampshire. You know, we have a, a, a real center-right state. You know, we, we have a state that, that prides itself in, in freedom and fiscal conservative. And so, you know, even Paul Hodes, if you remember some years back, uh, had a sudden campaign transformation. He's running around saying, I'm a conservative, if you remember that. Yeah. And, and so, you know, and, and the presidential candidates, so they're all conservatives this time. And, and you know, some 
besides Senator Cruz? Well, might be. But for most of them, we can only guess. And with others, the guessing is over. And we are disappointed. We know they're not fiscal conservatives. With Senator Cruz, we do not need to guess, and we will not be disappointed. Senator Cruz has distinguished himself as the country's strongest conservative leader in a Congress where too often being an insider is much more important than being a public servant. Consider, if you will, how we know this about Senator Cruz. Nearly alone, he stood in the Senate for almost a day, for 21 hours on our behalf, so that we would know of the absurdity and failure of Obamacare. He has worked tirelessly on our behalf in Congress for the issues that are near and dear to us. Obviously to stop and repeal Obamacare, to control the spiraling federal debt and spending, to stop executive amnesty and other acts of lawlessness by the Obama administration, to defend our rights as gun owners, as family members, as believers in God to stand with Israel, to stop Iran from getting nuclear weapons. Yeah. To reverse the efforts of Obama and the left to weaken America. To defund the killing of babies and the selling of their parts by Planned Parenthood. You know, so, so it really comes down to this. Others can and will talk the talk. And either we don't know if they'll walk the walk or we already see them walking away from us. One candidate will not waver and will stand by us as we work to rebuild America and its foreign policy. One candidate stands out for the rest. Crook TV.